Today we're going to be building up ice temples and teaching you how to play Nunatak. Hi, I'm Nikki and this is Libby and we're really excited to show you this fantastic one to four player game. Now in this game we're going to be building up an ice temple which looks fantastic on the table and the way we're going to be doing that is by placing our little cubes here onto the board and also doing some set collection. So these are what we're going to be placing on the board and this basically accounts to the number of turns that we're going to get throughout the game. Um, as you can see the board is set out here, um, each of these tiles has been placed placed randomly and there are different symbols on there. Um, these symbols relate also to the cards that are available. Now on your turn you will be choosing one of the cards that are available and matching the symbol here with one that's on the board. And when you do that you'll then place on your piece and start building the temple. It's really important that you think about where you're going to place your ice block because you're going to get different scores for different things that you're going to be doing. So, for example, if I were to complete a square, I would be getting some points for completing a square here. I might want to be working towards completing a line, in which case my little block would be moving up my architect track. I might also get special abilities depending on where I place it. So if, if for example, I have an elder card, I could place onto the elder piece here, which would then allow me to take one of these two cards here, which would give me also extra added bonuses or things that I could do during the game or extra end points. If I were to place on one of the build points, I can actually move this card so that I could take this piece here, for example, put it on here, and then place on there, which would then get me better points. So when we complete a square like Nikki has here, she's got her five points because she won the majority here. It, I know it's even because it's her turn, she has won the tie here. So she has the five points and the blue player has two points. And at the point that the square is complete, we add on another layer of the temple. Place that so. And this will obviously give us a new symbol um, that will allow us to place on. You don't have to finish your full layer before you can come up. Um, different, different areas of building a temple can happen at different times. So it could be you might have three tiers at one side and, and nothing the other side and that's absolutely fine. If we were to place our blocks onto here, this also gives us some more scoring options. So, it does indeed. Yeah. Um, I place one here, this means that I'm going to get two points. You only get the points for the colours of your own supporting ice blocks. So if somebody else didn't have any ice blocks underneath, there'd be kind of no point really on putting their, that block onto that piece. And you can also see somebody else has got four, you want to try and block that off so they don't start getting a load of whole, whole points for that as well. Exactly, yes. Yeah, position is very important. And the pointing of the foundation blocks only happens on your own turn. So in this case, the blue player wouldn't achieve two points. It would only be the orange player that would get two points in this turn. But it's not just the placement of your cubes on the board that's important in this game. Yes, you're building out the tower and it looks beautiful mm -hmm. and you're gaining points there, but you cannot forget your set collection because that's where a lot of your points towards the end of the game are really going to be racking up. So we're partway through the game now. I'll pick up a Beast of Burden card, which means that I can place mine up here on top of this block here. So this means we can now score our supporting ice blocks as we mentioned earlier. So for this one, I would just be getting one point because I've only got one supporting ice block of my colour. This and the rest of my beasts of burden. They have different numbers of beasts on the cards, some of them one, some of them up to three. Um, and at the end of the game, you'll be multiplying the number of beast symbols on the cards by the number of cards that you have. So that can really rack up quite high if you manage to collect quite a lot of those beasts. Um, it sounds a little confusing, but you are actually given a really nifty kind of end scoring card, which you can use, which, which basically when, when you get to the end of the game, you just work your way from the top to the bottom yeah. and, and, and just work on all different bits there. So builders, for example, the person with the most builders uh, will get 20 points. The sculptors, you can see the more cards you have, the more points you'll get. And those also can be changed with some other cards that come up throughout the game. So you can improve sometimes on those scoring areas, which is really great too. You also have the artisan cards. So there's three different sorts of artisan cards. There's the pickaxe, there's the pole saw, and there's the rope. So you're going to be getting a different amount of points for, well, 
depending how many of them you have. If you have a full set, you'll get 10 points. For two rope, for example, you can get three points, uh, and that will work for each of the different tool types. The Architects is a really interesting one that scores. So um, when a row is completed on the board here, you are able to move up your cube on the Architect track. And then wherever you manage to get to on the track, is then multiplied by the number of architect cards that you have managed to gain throughout the game. So again, this can be a really great way to score if you manage to complete a lot of rows throughout the game. And what you can see there, actually on, on Libby's architect track, she's actually got a blessing card, which has given her uh, an extra architect and moved it up. So the blessing cards you get from, from the elders here. So if I were to pick an elder symbol here, this means that I can pick one of these two blessing cards and also these get swapped out so there's always two available and they will give you different end scores different different th things that you can do during the game some of them are immediate some of them are at any point using once and some of them are just end scoring yeah so there, for example there are some which will allow you to score for any of your ice blocks that you've placed around the edge of the board um, and that can Again, they can just really affect the scoring towards the end of the game. Um, or you might have a one-off benefit, like allowing you to take a second turn or something like that. Absolutely. And at the end of the game, you, if you look at the Elder Cards that, you, that you've got... Have we got the Elder Cards out? I've got one there. Uh, the symbols at the top of the Elder Card, you will also get points for each of the set collections you've got with those symbols on, which is really cool. So they add a whole nother level of scoring there. And of course, you're then also scoring for any complete sets of all of the different types of cards. So if you've managed to get at least one of everything, you're going to get some more points there too. And the most exciting part of scoring, in our opinion, is being able to put that temple on the, the, the roof section on the top of this massive construction that you've managed to build between all of the players during the game, which is super fun. So this is what the temple looks like at the end of the game. And obviously, as we've said, we've been creating score as we've gone along with all of our different, creating the different squares, coming up the different levels, and we've okay on the scores at the moment but it's really now when it really hikes up and we get to rack around the table here and um, there are some tokens in the box for both 100 and 200 so if you're really good then you can see how far you can cycle around and that's basically by scoring our set collection that we've been doing so um, you can see on mine here I have really gone down on the architect track and I've been completing as many lines as I possibly can to try Try and get the most points here and i think that i've also got the most amount of workers which will give me the bonus points that we spoke about there um, i have got a blessing card which allows for better scoring on the sculptors but unfortunately i haven't done very well at collecting those so i've done really really well on collecting my artist and i also have a card which gives me better scores so <laughs> watch out but again, yes. I, have, I haven't added them up yet but there's quite a lot in there so there is stuff, 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 yes stuff, stuff, stuff. and obviously the beast of burden are always quite a nice collection we must mention um whilst we're here that some of the cards and some of the tiles um are small sided so when i collected this card you can see i was able to choose between the sculptor or the artisan depending on what i was needing to choose these tend to come up towards the end of the game to make sure that that everyone is still able to place their cubes onto the temple itself so not only are the temple bases double-sided but also the cards so you can manipulate where you can go to best suit your position and your set collection so that was none attack we hope you've really enjoyed watching us play through and explain to you the rules there will be a helper app as well available um, at the same time as it is released this is obviously a prototype the uh the, the proper game will be a lot more finished than this, but we hope it's shown you kind of all the different bits that you need um, to play this absolutely amazing, family-friendly, mid-weight, mid-weight 
game. Right? Yeah, we just think that that set collection and placement combination is just so fantastic that it's everyone's going to love this one, yeah, aren't they? I think so too. Yeah. If you do have any questions, then do pop those in the comments. And of course, if you're new to the channel, we would love it if you would subscribe and we'll keep you up to date with everything that's coming from Cosmos and Devere. And of course, we also have our sister channel, which is Thames and Cosmos UK, which has more content on some of our STEM toys and things on there. So if you've got some young ones in the household, that might be a good one for you to go on over and subscribe to as well. Absolutely. So until next time, it's lovely talking to you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.